Apologies for the lack of a log last week. After doing research on this next entry in the logs, I found that this SCP is out of my bounds. As you know, my limited clearance prevents me from leaving Site-19. As a result, I had sent a formal request that they submit a log entry themselves to add to the log. But it led to the log being sent by airmail, which took a whole week to get here. As a result, I could not post the log last week. Apologies. Anyways, no more further delays. SCP Foundation Site 17, log entry number 2. Item number is SCP-239. The code name is The Witch Child. The object class is Keter. Uh, SCP-239 appears to be an 8-year-old girl, 1 meter in height and 20 kilograms in weight. Subject has shoulder-length blonde hair, and upon closer inspection, the subject's eyes shimmer, a gray-green shade. Subject seems to emit a previously undiscovered form of radiation, which has been named. Um, ah, fuck, white out. Whatever. Anyways, uh, these waves seem to be harmless in low concentrations, but in higher concentrations, they could break down matter on a subatomic level. SCP-239 seemingly has the ability to do whatever she expresses a will to do. Put simply, the subject can do anything that she truly wants to do on a uh, psychological level as long as she is conscious. Fortunately, she only seems to be able to affect herself and her immediate surroundings. Therefore, if she can see, she can change it. Uh, it would be... The most prudent course of action, however, to try to test how powerful she can be. She seems to be able to create and affect living matter. For example, um, when a D-class personnel accidentally caused her harm, she simply wished him away. <laughs> Fortunately, uh, when the subject was made to feel guilt for what she had done, she wished him back. Uh, SCP-239's self-preservation instinct makes her virtually invincible while she is conscious. Subject skin cannot be punctured by anything except for SCP-148. As a method of controlling the subject's ability, she has been told that she is a witch. This, besides improving morale greatly, makes her believe that she is unable to use her abilities outside of a pre-approved list of spells given to her by the SCP Foundation. This will hopefully prevent any and all attempt escapes. However, the subject is to be kept calm at all times to prevent any subconscious wish of harm to herself or others. The origin SCP-239 came to the attention of the Foundation very soon after her birth in... Fucking hell, that's an awful lot of whiteout. Okay, uh, shortly after her birth, the hospital was destroyed by an unexplained explosion. The uh, press informed us that it was due to a gas leak. SCP teams were dispatched shortly to search the site for any abnormalities. The only living person they were able to locate was SCP-239. For the next eight years, the subject was raised under SCP care. As of... Subject is to be kept in a medically induced coma until further notice. This decision was made by, well, never mind. It doesn't say who on this document, but okay. Anyway, uh, the special containment procedures requires SCP-239 to be kept within a room cell furnished with one bed, one EKG machine, and an IV to be filled with phenobarbital mixed with uh, more whiteout, apparently. <sighs> You guys are giving me a lot to work with, uh, just saying. Um, so anyway, uh, under no circumstances is SCP-239 to be removed from her containment area at any given time. The walls of the cell are to be coated with a telekill lead alloy. Only Class II personnel are allowed to have any contact with SCP-239 at any time. All personnel guarding SCP-239's containment area are to be equipped with telekill headgear, SCP-148, 
Subject's proper name is Sugaros St- uh, Stefan Stefan's Dotier, and under no uh, absolutely no condition should subject ever to be awakened. Any personnel found attempting to awaken the subject will be immediately terminated. SCP-239 is permanently contained here at Site-17. My analysis of the situation has led me to the conclusion that SCP-239 is an unacceptable containment and security risk. Although several proposals have been made, i.e. using her to contain other SCPs, the example of SCP-953 and the others must serve as a stark reminder of the risks of overestimating the Foundation's ability to control SCPs with reality-altering powers. I would therefore like to make the following proposal. A piercing implement will be constructed of SCP-148, capable of penetrating SCP-239's otherwise impenetrable skin. This tool will be used to kill SCP-239 while she is asleep and her powers are neutralized. Because of the danger of SCP-239 awakening and resisting termination, it is my recommendation that the selected operative carry SCP-668 as well in order to minimize complications. One of the dangers of this procedure is the possibility that SCP-239 will awaken and perceive the operative as a friend or good person, thus changing reality to match. It is for this reason that I would like to volunteer to carry out the procedure personally. A review of my personnel file should indicate that my past experiences should allow me to carry out the operation, even after a reality shift of this nature.